to be young now, to be young whenever. I can, I can only speak for my generation, but it is to be intensely judged. I can't imagine what it is to grow up with the onslaught of social media and it was a relief to play characters that are wrestling with an internal dilemma absent the ability to go on Reddit or Twitter or Instagram or TikTok and figure out where they fit in. Dr. Timothy Chalamet went on to say sometimes social media even makes it tough to be alive. And the impact of social media has become an inescapable reality for many of us, affecting everything from our politics to the human brain. I'm happy to welcome Max Fisher, author of The Chaos Machine, the inside story of how social media rewired our brain and our world. It was released yesterday. Max, we know these platforms radicalize people. We know we're addicted to them. But how serious is it? So what we now know, what is new and what is in this book and what I've spent four or five years chasing, is we finally have hard, scientific empirical demonstrative evidence that it is changing your nature if you are on these platforms. And this is not just, it's easy to think, oh, it's What's just changing too. your nature, changing your brain. It changes, oh my God, it changes your brain chemistry because that is part of the addictive function that was deliberately designed into it. It changes uh, your emotional makeup, the emotions that you feel, not just when you're online, but all the time, even when you're offline, far away from social media. It changes the way you think about your identity and the place of your identity in the world that changes the way that you think about other social groups, makes you more distrustful and antagonistic towards them. And it even changes your sense of right and wrong. The way that you judge what is moral and immoral is distorted by the platforms. And it's not something they set out to do, but it is something that they had evidence that they were going to be doing. And it is now we, we can actually show how that effect works. It might not be what they set out to do, but it's what they're doing and they're not stopping. So what's going to change this, right? If we're addicted, we're not changing our behavior. The government hasn't regulated anything and these companies are making zillions of dollars. So what will be the catalyst to change things? I think the, there's a, there's a top down and a bottom up answer. And for both of these, I think a lot of it has to do with a just mental shift in understanding that these are the cigarette companies. They are selling a product that is addictive, that is baked into their business model. It cannot be engineered out of their business model. You see that some lawmakers and regulators are starting to see this. They're starting to see it's not about make this tweak, enforce this moderation policy a little bit better, but confronting these companies is something that is, is deliberately distorting us in ways that are unhealthy. And the, the bottom-up answer, which is the one that I get asked all the time, and I think is actually a little bit more encouraging is that once you start to see the drug-like effect that it has on you, if you are anything like the median American who spends a couple hours a day on these social platforms, when you start to understand it the way that alcohol might affect you, once you understand the way that coffee affects you, it becomes easier to uh, control for that effect, to understand and to differentiate when is something, when are you doing something because you want to do it, because the platform has trained you to do it, and to understand when you can and cannot use it safely, and maybe, like with any addictive product, moderate it to what is going to be most responsible for you. Are you on social media? I am. It is hard not to be. They okay, have so just... hold on. <laughs> all that you studied for five years, yeah. all that you just told me, but still, yeah, you like to tweet? That's, I am that's on crazy. It. it is crazy. They have they've so successfully dominated our discourse, the way that we consume news. I am on it maybe 95% less than I used to be, and I use it completely differently. I mean, again, understanding it like a drug, it's one that hides its effects, so you don't realize that you are taking this drug every time you open this platform, which for most Americans is a couple dozen times a day. And when you start to treat it like a drug, maybe you only take it once or twice a day in controlled circumstances very carefully, which is how I use it now, as opposed to all the time for everything. Okay, but here's what's different between social media and drugs, alcohol, cigarettes. Sure. They are all highly regulated. Yeah. Yes, that's right. And it, it's, it's tough to make that shift with social media because the drug-like effect is, number one, it's hidden. Because you think that you're just on this platform interacting with your friends, reading the news, and you don't realize that these incredibly powerful systems are delivering these dopamine boosts and changing your behavior. And two, because the drug-like effect changes your social behavior. Or it's not is it tough? Like 
because there's no political will to do so because of the huge right. lobbying dollars right. of those companies, right? Yeah, Pregnant point. women still love smoking cigarettes and drinking until the government said, here are the risks. Yeah, it's true. It's, it was a big top-down shift in regulation. It was a big bottom-up shift in cultural attitudes towards what we considered. There was, a, you know, a lot of people went from thinking it's okay to smoke when you were, for example, pregnant to thinking that you shouldn't do that. And that change in social norms around cigarettes had a big effect. And I think it has to be both in order to change how we think about social media, too. Lawmakers, are you watching? If not, read Max's book. Max Fitcher, thanks for joining us. Thank you. I appreciate it. Again, his new book, The Chaos Machine, it is out on bookshelves now.